Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambu Dasa Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambu Dasa Homage to the Blessed Noble and Perfectly Enlightened One Homage to the Blessed Noble and Perfectly Enlightened One. Namo Sadanto Suchedoye Olahudi Samyao Samputoshe. Namo Sadanto Suchedoye Olahudi Samyao Samputoshe. Wushang Shen Shen Wei Miao Fa Bai Chen Wan Jie Nan Sao Yu. Supreme and wondrous Dharma, subtle and profound, rarely is encountered even in billions of eons. But now we see and hear it and accept it reverently. May we truly understand the Buddha's actual meaning. Venerable Master, Dharma friends, Shri Fushangra and Gobei Shishong, Dajia Amitofo. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Sutra Lecture tonight. Glad to have you here. Uh, today is sun Saturday, the 12th of August. Uh, we're here in the Berkeley Buddhist Monastery looking into the Flower Garland Sutra, the Avatamsaka Sutra. So let's invoke spiritual presence. Invite the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to drop by to bless everyone. Make all of you hopes and wishes for goodness come true. Why am I? 
moving forward here. And here we are. The Chochenyo Ohlone people. Uh, do we want to drop this down the rest of the way? The Ohlone people practice spiritual connections to the earth and to all creation here on their ancestral land for tens of thousands of years. And today, we acknowledge them as traditional custodians and original storytellers of these lands. We offer our respect to their elders, past, present, and emerging, and to all First Nations people whose sovereignty was never ceded. Chochenyo uh, Ohlone people, Shuli we do. Doesn't sound anything like the Chinese original, but it's got its own style. Here we go. The bell sound wide resounds throughout a hundred million worlds. The Buddha's law is heard and spread. All throughout the triple world, the wondrous sound that everywhere fills the Dharma realm with peace. May those who hear it gain the strength to follow in faith the Buddha's path. All right, uh, you know what? We have folks who are coming in uh, after we got started. I know you travel a long distance to get here, so some of you 50 miles from San Jose. The result is people are sitting on the floor while there are a bunch of lazy bowing benches piled up on the wall. So if somebody could motivate themselves to pick out the bowing benches and give them to the people sitting on the floor, all will be well. Also, if anybody is adventurous, we've got the balcony. Uh, you get a different perspective from the balcony. Um, those benches do really well along one more row, one more vertical row. There's another one right down here that nobody's using. <coughs> okay. We want everybody to f have a seat and feel welcome. It's 90 minutes long. As we get started, I'd like to appreciate the volunteers who make this lecture go further. We have Vietnamese translators taking us into the world of Vietnamese language. We have Mandarin translators uh, translating Chinese. Luke, your bench is right up here in front. There it is, with nobody in it. Um, we have tech people putting this out onto Zoom and YouTube and uh, into uh, online forums that uh, Chinese speakers can attend. So all those good hearts and hands and consciousness are making it possible for my words to go much further than if I were just talking along here in English. Let me tell you what we got going tonight. Um, on September 14th, it will be the anniversary of Master Empty Cloud, Master Shuyun's birthday. And that's uh, convenient because we have uh, recently begun a special Friday afternoon series. Starts at 1 p.m., Friday afternoon. Are you ready? Watch. I've got something special here. There it is. Look at that. 
须老和尚画传，上宣下画，和尚老和尚，朱树。So at 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons on Zoom, which means folks can listen to it worldwide, I'm explaining Master Xu Yun's picture biography. Now the thing about this text is that、uh, our teacher, Master Shenhua, whose picture is right here, he looked over the 120 years of Master Empty Cloud's life. And picked out 200 events、um, that he went to an artist and said, "Please draw a picture of each to accompany each of these events." And the artist came up with some amazing, amazing images. Master Hua took a、uh, summarized the what's called the Nian Pu, the autobiography of Master Empty Cloud, and put it into a summary. And then wrote a four-line verse to commemorate it. So we've got the event itself, a picture of it, which are beautiful to look at. We've got、uh, a Chinese language summary, and then a verse that Master Hua wrote.、Uh, the, the verses themselves are just spectacular. And then it's all translated into English, and it's available、uh, online, actually. Uh, for free, anyone who wants to read it online, you don't have to wait for my lecture series. You can go right out and find it.、Um, I won't tell you where, though. Ha ha! You got to come to the lecture to find out. Ha ha! So it's、uh, once once we get it, once once we discover it, people will pass it hand to hand because it's just really fine. The images are clear and sharp and bright and clean.、Um, it's delightful. So we will be every Friday afternoon、uh, taking one episode and explaining it. It'll be translated again into Chinese and Vietnamese, so I can double my content because I don't have to switch languages.、Um, and we'll be telling stories, just terrific stories. Master Empty Cloud.、Um, we're going to talk about him later on tonight. That's part of our program. But he was—they—they they call him the Zhong Men Tai Do. The—he's the North Star of the Chan School for 200 years in China. Clearly, the most important, famous, significant Chinese Buddhist monk of the、uh, 19th and 20th century. He was born in 1840. The American Civil War started in 1860. He could have been drafted. He was 20 years old when the American Civil War broke out, and yet he entered Nirvana in 1959. So when you live 120 years, people talk about you like that. Just amazing lifespan. So he—that's、uh, what we're doing. We've got this incredible、uh, resource in Master Hua's picture biography. We've got the stories that it contains. Beautiful images you can look at while you hear the story, and in the process of this, we have、um, some photos that I'm going to be introducing.、Uh, photos of Master Empty Cloud. Here he is、uh, at age 119, I believe, one year before he passed away. Many people、uh, tell us that. Whenever I talk about Master Empty Cloud as as our grand teacher, he is our Shi Gong.、Um, when I tell people about him and and show his picture, people say, "I I I dreamed of him. How could that be? I just this old Chinese guy came into my dreams, and I felt really good. That's him." You know, people tell me that、uh, too many times for it to be coincidence. So pretty special. Pretty special.、Um, they say that the story goes that he is a, a eighth-stage bodhisattva,、um, and what does that mean? We'll we'll talk about it. Talk about it later. But just to let you all know that that is happening, and we'll be going into it more tonight、uh, before we're done. Okay. Now 
Tonight's sutra, oh my goodness, we are just about to launch into 101 samadhis. Ah. Before we do, what's a samadhi? Samei in Chinese, or zheng ding, zheng shou, they say. Samadhi is a result of meditation. If you're a really, really good meditator, um, you can have this... <coughs> Turn that off there. You can have this state called samadhi. Um, let's see if I share my... Oh, we're not on Zoom. You're looking at me, so let's go back there. Okay. There we go. So samadhi is... A there's a change in your sitting. Now let's say you're a meditator. Let's say you're sitting like, like you all are here. How nice. Um, you take your eyes and your ears and your nose and your tongue, and most important, your mind, and they focus. They find, I don't know, a pitch. They find a vibration level. They find a color they find a, so what did I say? Pitch meaning sound, a vibration, a movement so that touches the, the body, the sound touches the ears, the, the color touches the eyes. There's many, many ways to enter into samadhi, but because of this experience, there is a new harmony. Body, mind, spirit, breath, all reach a new level. The four most accessible samadhis are called the four dhyanas. Master Hua talked about them. They're numbered. There's chu chan, er chan, san chan, and si chan. The first, second, third, and fourth samadhi, dhyana. And in these dhyanas, Master was he would say, anybody can, any of you can enter samadhi. These four, all you have to do is end your desire, he'd say. And ab in the abstract, that sounds, I don't know if I want to end my desire. What does that mean? So he would say, just don't run out. Stay home. When a Chan master tells you to stay home, he's not talking about, you know, not going out your front door. Well, there's that too. But what he means is, let your eyes be happy and content with what they see. They don't have to search for sights that will please them more. Your ears are happy to hear fully every sound that's available and the silence between. Right? You don't have to go out listening for certain sounds and rejecting other sounds. Your nose, your tongue, your body are content to be as they are. You don't get that craving. Mmm, I really need some chocolate. Oh, I need some ice cream. Oh, I know what flavor I want. You know. Oh, I want double pepperoni pizza whole the anchovies. You know, I know what I want. Or coffee with the wrong combination. If you're a black coffee drinker, somebody dumps cream in it. Vice versa, you like cream and sugar and they only have black, there's no cream and sugar. And it's just not right and you're unhappy. You reject that flavor, right? That's called running out. Master Hua would say, stay home. Just stay home with your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. And that's the start. There are technical language for it. There's co Buddhist code language. What do we say? Hui guang fan zhao. What does it mean to hui guang fan zhao, to return the light and look within? It means take the outflowing eye energy that is searching for something you like and avoiding things you don't, people you like and people, you, and you happily move it back, bring it back. Fan wen, wen zi xing, turn the hearing back to hear your own nature. So, hmm, there's a bit of yoga subtle yoga involved and there's a lot of just simple old discipline can you be content with boring nothing if so 
there's a place where boring nothing flips and it becomes everything. Samadhi begins right there. And Master Hua would say, if you can do those things, you're doing what's called Duan Yu, cutting off desire. Sounds in the abstract is scary, but when you really do it, it's this doorway to where you enter, your body and mind seem to go through a gate. They go through a door, and suddenly something opens. And what opens is, you could say, the Dharma realm, which is just everything that ordinary eyes, searching for something you like, totally obscure. Once you stay home, oh, something opens, and everything there pleases you, because it's all fundamentally yours. But by searching for things we like, we lose what is our own. That's why these six senses are called thieves. Right? The thieves of samadhi. So, <clears throat> anyway, I'm going into it. Before we touch the sutra, I don't mean to digress too long here. But samadhi is so fundamental to wisdom, which is a goal of Buddhist practice. The idea is samadhi prepares the mind for the wisdom that we all have. If our minds are quiet, then when we look, oh, here's insight, here's clarity, here's understanding. We know what to do and we're never wrong. Imagine if we never made mistakes, right? Every choice we made turned out to be the right one. Well, if we have samadhi, then we've got that insight and what was right yesterday is not suitable for the conditions today. What's right is according to Sayyam, right? It's according to conditions. So samadhi follows the conditions. You never make a mistake. So now, why am I going on about this? Because we're about to launch into 101 samadhis. <laughs> And I looked at the commentary and says the samadhis all follow what bodhisattvas need to do. So in other words, these samadhis are functions. They're tools that you pick up to solve a problem. Oh, your parents aren't getting along tonight. They're about to launch into their arguing and bickering and you, the filial child, knows exactly what to say so that they don't push each other's buttons. And instead they laugh. Ah, that samadhi worked really well. You were able to prevent quarrels. The quarrel preventing samadhi, right? Oh, you're, uh, what's going on? You can't decide, you're, you're there with your brothers and one of them wants to watch golf on TV, and the other one wants to watch Netflix. And they're about to fight and throw the remote at each other. And what do you do? You take them all out for wee tea golf. And everybody's happy. Oh, I'm so glad we went out tonight, right? So it's like, that's the wee tea golf samadhi. It's right there in the sutra. No, it's not, I'm kidding. But you get the point, is you know exactly what to do to get to meet the situation. And that's what these 101 are. We're going to read them. And I was looking at it, and I thought, gee whiz, are we going to, should we go through the whole list? It's, it's long, 101. We have to read it once in Chinese and then once in English. And I thought, why not? Let's try it. Let's see if we can do it. You'll see it up here on the screen, and we can read them all together, not consecutively, but in unison. And those of you who are still learning your Chinese, like me, we can practice you making these Chinese sounds. Those of you who are still learning Middle American English pronunciation can practice English together. We'll read it together. And there are people who will tell you that the sutra, here's the Avatamsaka Sutra, listing 101 samadhis in a row, one huge paragraph. You want to see? This is really fun. Uh, here's my commentary. Here it is right here. 
let's pick one out here. I'll show you. It's kind of, uh, here we go. Let's look at the Wai Fa Jia San Mei, the unobstructed Dharma realm samadhi, and see if we can pull that up. If we can, I want to show you the how the paragraph looks. There it is. Okay, here we are. Take a look at this chunk of text. What are the many samadhis? The answer is, whoops, hold it. There we go, we'll just make it big. When you see this in the text, it's kind of awesome. Take a look. These are 101 samadhis. Do you think we dare read all these? Oh, man. That's a lot of samadhis. The names all the way down to there. To, to the end. Now, people will tell you that the sutra contains huge chunks of text like this so that by reading them, you enter samadhi while you're reading them. <laughs> Somebody else might say, yeah, that's called falling asleep, Dharma Master, right? No, no. It's profoundly moving in, in the best of possible ways. So let's see. Um, I don't want to try to explain each of the samadhis. We would be doing it for the next three weeks, probably, the next three lectures. Um, so that's kind of, it's an experiment tonight, and we've got so many friends here, and people listening in China, people listening in Taiwan and Hong Kong and Quebec and Malaysia, Indonesia. So let's see how we go. Let's see how it works. And we'll start with this final paragraph summarizing the bodhisattvas sitting in the Jada Grove waiting for the Buddha to explain entering the Dharma realm. That's the scene where we are. <coughs> This is the summary. Are we ready? Why not? This, this is our warm-up, okay? We'll do it together in unison. Pay attention to the punctuation. That tells us to take a breath. Okay, we ready? Here we go. Palms together. All together. Bi zhu pu sa yi zhong zhong jie zhong zhong dao zhong zhong men zhong zhong ru Zhong zhong li qu, zhong zhong sui shun, zhong zhong zhi hui, zhong zhong zhu dao, zhong zhong fang bian, zhong zhong san mei, ru shi shi, I'm sorry, my mistake, one more time, ru ru shi deng shi bu ke shuo, fo cha wei chen shu, fo shen bian hai fang bian men. Okay, that's our conclusion. And what did we just read? We read together, all those bodhisattvas used various understandings, various paths, various gateways, various realizations, various principles and approaches, various compliances, various wisdoms, various aids to the way, various skillful methods, and various samadhis as skillful gateways to enter the ocean of the Buddha's spiritual transformations, as numerous as dust particles in ineffably many Buddha kshetras. Bodhisattvas from ten directions, we know their names, we know the names of the lands they came from, arrived at the Jada Grove, made offerings to the Buddha, one by one knelt down and sang to him, sang him poetry, praising the Dharma, or wisdom, or the Buddha, and then they sat back, crossed their legs, and waited. And what they saw next, what we've just been listening to for the last two months now, are the Buddha's uh, response to their arrival. He starts shining lights. He starts making things appear and then making things disappear. He gives them samadhis, he gives them wisdom, insights, 
uh, visions of worlds and living beings, and methods of practice. And this is all preliminary, it's all prelude. We haven't started the chapter yet. Right? So this is what's been going on. And here we go. So they used all this stuff as a door to enter the ocean of the Buddha's incredible light show, spiritual transformations, meaning all the things that he's been doing, waiting for the time to come to start the lecture. Early on, it specified that there was a bunch of folks in the audience who couldn't see a thing. Interestingly, we spent about three weeks talking about that because it was really detailed. Who couldn't see it and why? It wasn't available to everybody. And when you read that, you think, that's interesting. This is, I mean, there is real living beings there listening to the Buddha. This is like a living document. This is how it, like, it actually happened. Like in Congress, there were the mega Republicans who didn't want democracy to go forward. Yeah, yeah, they were sitting right there, right next to the other folks who were concerned about the welfare of the country. Right, that's real life. There they were, uh, even in the Jada Grove, and yet they weren't able to see, and yet the Bodhisattvas could. Okay, now, we are ready, here we go. Let's, let's read the first sentence. We ready? Everybody together? Yun he zhong zhong san mei. Okay. What is meant by the various samadhis? They are as follows. Are we ready? Let's jump in. Here we go. Starting right here. So wait. So wait. Pu zhuang yan fa jie san mei. Pu zhao yi che san shi wu ai jing jie san mei. Fa jie wu chi bie zhi guang ming san mei. Ru ru lai jing jie bu dong zhuan san mei. Pu zhao wu bian xu kong san mei. Ru ru lai li san mei. For Wei Yong Man Fun Shun Zhuang Yan San Mei Yi Che Fa Jie Xuan Zhuan Zhang San Mei Ru Yue Pu Xian Yi Che Fa Jie Yi Wu Ai Yin Da Kai Yan San Mei Wow Pu Qing Jing Fa Guang Ming San Mei Wu Ai Zeng Fa Wang Chuang San Mei Yi Yi Jing Jie Zhong Xi Jian Yi Che Zhu Fo Hai San Mei Yu Yi Che Shi Jian Xi Xian Shen San Mei Ru Ru Lai Wu Chi Bie Shen Jing Jie San Mei Sui Yi Che Shi Jian Zhuan Da Bei Zhang San Mei Zhi Yi Che Fa Wu You Yi San Mei Stop Anybody Ru San Mei? If so, you won't tell us because you have Ru San Mei. Okay. We'll do that many to start. Here we go. Ready? What is meant by the various samadhis? They are as follows. The samadhi of universally adorning the Dharma realm. Semicolon, stop, take a breath. The samadhi of universally illumining unobstructed states of mind in the three periods of time. The samadhi of the Dharma realm's non-discriminating light of wisdom. The samadhi of entering the thus come one's unmoving state of mind. The samadhi of universally illumining boundless space. The samadhi of realizing the thus come one's powers. The samadhi of being adorned by the Buddha's fearlessnesses and courageous vigor. The samadhi of the turning treasury of Dharma realms. The samadhi of the moon's appearance everywhere in all Dharma realms and proclamations with unhindered voices. The samadhi of a universally purifying light of Dharma. The samadhi of the embroidery banner of the unimpeded Dharma king. 
the samadhi of seeing the ocean-wide assembly of Buddhas in all states of mind, the samadhi of making a body appear in all worlds, the samadhi of entering the state of the thus come one's undifferentiated body, the samadhi of great compassion that responds according with all worlds, the samadhi of the realization that all dharmas are free of characteristics. Letting the silence descend is part of the experience, right? Okay, we'll read a page full of samadhis. Ready? Let me go. Chi yi che fa jiu jing ji mie san mei sui wu so de er nang bian hua Pu Xian Shi Jian San Mei Pu Ru Yi Che Cha San Mei Zhuang Yan Yi Che Fu Cha Cheng Zheng Jue San Mei Go on, slow down, let's do it together, listen with your ears as everybody recites together, here we go Guan Yi Che Shi Jian Zhu Si Xiang Chi Bie San Mei Guan Yi Che Zhong Sheng Jing Jie Wu Zhang Ai San Mei Nang Chu Sheng Yi Che Ru Lai Mu San Mei Nang Xiu Xing Ru Yi Che Fu Hai Gong De Dao San Mei Yi Yi Jing Jie Zhong Chu Xian Shen Bian Jin Wei Lai Ji San Mei Ru Yi Che Ru Lai Ban Shi Hai San Mei Jin Wei Lai Ji Hu Chi Yi Che Ru Lai Zhong Xing San Mei Yi Jue Ding Jie Li Ling Xian Zai Shi Fang Yi Che Fu Cha Hai Qing Jing San Mei Yi Nian Zhong Pu Zhao Yi Che Fu So Zhu San Mei Ru Yi Che Jing Jie Wu Ai Ji San Mei Amazing. The Samadhi of. Are we ready? Here we go. The Samadhi of realizing the ultimate quiescence of all dharmas the samadhi of knowing that nothing can be attained and yet universally appearing by transformation in the world, the samadhi of entering all kshetras everywhere, the samadhi that adorns all the Buddha kshetras with the accomplishment of right awakening, the samadhi of contemplating the various characteristics and forms of the hosts of worlds, the samadhi of contemplating without obstruction the states of beings, the samadhi of becoming the mother of all thus come ones, the samadhi of cultivating and entering the pathways to the excellent virtues of the ocean-wide assemblies of Buddhas, the samadhi of manifesting spiritual transformations in every state to the end of the future, the samadhi of realizing the ocean of thus come one's former deeds, the samadhi of sustaining the thus come one's lineage to the end of the future, the samadhi of using decisive and clear comprehension of all Buddha kshetras as they appear in the present moment throughout the ten directions, the samadhi of within one thought universally shining on the Buddha's dwellings, the samadhi of realizing the parameters of all states without any obstruction. Okay, did anybody pick up on? Samadhi of becoming the mother of all Buddhas. Any volunteers? How about this side? 
Who's to say? It's kind of like a mini session, huh? Okay, ready? Ling Yi Che Shi Jie Wei Yi Fu Cha San Mei Chu Yi Che Fu Bian Hua Shen San Mei Yi Jin Gang Wang Zhi Zhi Yi Che Zhu Gen Hai San Mei Zhi Yi Che Ru Lai Tong Yi Shen San Mei Zhi Yi Che Fa Jie Suo An Li Shi Zhu Xin Nian Ji San Mei Yu Yi Che Fa Jie Guang Da Guo Du Zhong Shi Xian Nie Pan San Mei Ling Zhu Zui Shang Chu San Mei Yu Yi Che Fo Cha Xian Zhong 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 Sheng Chi Bie Shen San Mei Pu Ru Yi Che Fo Zhi Hui San Mei Zhi Yi Che Fa Xing Xiang San Mei Yi Nian Pu Zhi San Shi Fa San Mei Nian Nian Zhong Pu Xian Fa Jie Shen San Mei Yi Shi Zi Yong Meng Zhi Zhi Yi Che Ru Lai Chu Xing Tsu Di San Mei Yu Yi Che Fa Jie Jing Jie Hui Yan Yuan Man San Mei Yong Meng Chu Xiang Shi Li San Mei Wow. Inside of each of these names is hours and hours and days and days and weeks and weeks and years and years of hard work sitting still. Are we ready? Here we go. The samadhi of putting all worlds into a single Buddha Kshetra. The samadhi of showing all the Buddha's transformation bodies. The samadhi of employing regal Vajra-like wisdom to recognize the ocean of all sense faculties. The samadhi of knowing all thus come one's identical body. The samadhi of knowing that all things in the Dharma realm abide peacefully within the limits of the mind. The samadhi of manifesting nirvana in all the vast and great countries of the Dharma realm. The samadhi of bringing other beings to abide in superior places. The samadhi of manifesting the various bodies of beings throughout all Buddha kshetras. The samadhi of everywhere realizing the wisdom of a Buddha. The samadhi of knowing the nature and appearance of all dharmas. The samadhi of being able in every thought to completely know the dharmas of the three periods of time. The samadhi of universally showing the body of the dharma realm in a single thought. The samadhi of the courageous lion-like wisdom that knows the successive order of Buddha's appearances in the world. The samadhi of making perfect the eye of wisdom within all states of the dharma realm the samadhi of courageously approaching the ten powers. Why does it take courage to approach the ten powers? Because if you have them, you know what everybody's thinking. <laughs> what could be more terrifying? To realize how much people don't understand <laughs> How many awful thoughts people are subduing or barely holding on to could explode any minute you know them all. Because you have Tashinton, the knowledge of others' thoughts. It takes courage to even get close. 
bodhisattvas, because they have samadhi, can do that without freaking out. We're doing good. The samadhi of patiently reciting all the samadhis on the page. Ready? Fang yi che gong de yuan man guang ming Pu zhao shi jian san mei Bu dong zang san mei Five characters. Shuo yi fa pu ru yi che fa san mei Yu yi fa yi yi che yan yin chi bie Shun shi san mei Yan shuo yi che fo Wu er fa san mei. Zhi san shi wu ai ji san mei. Zhi yi che jie wu chi bie san mei. Ru shi li wei shi fang bian san mei. Yu yi che jie cheng jiu yi che pu sa heng bu duan jue san mei. Wow. 十方普现身三昧，于法界自在成正觉三昧，生一切妄闻。Uh, let's see here. Sorry, they gave us an alternative character there. Here we go. One more time. 生一切安稳受三昧，出一切庄严具。庄严虚空界三昧，念念中，除等众生数，变化身云三昧，如来净空月光明三昧。Ah, that's a pretty one. All right, here we go. The samadhi of shining excellent virtues, perfect light that everywhere illuminates the world. The samadhi of the unshakable matrix. The samadhi of speaking but one dharma that allows realization of all dharmas. The samadhi of using every language and voice to explain one dharma. The samadhi of teaching all Buddhas non-dual gateway. The samadhi of knowing how the past, present, and future are entirely unhindered. The samadhi of knowing how eons are free of any difference. The samadhi of realizing the subtle and fine aspects of the ten powers. The samadhi of successfully cultivating bodhisattva's practices throughout all eons without interruption. The samadhi of manifesting a body that pervades the ten directions. The samadhi of realizing sovereign right awakening throughout the Dharma realm. The samadhi of creating a feeling of total peace and tranquility. Now there you go. The samadhi of creating many decorations to beautify the realm of space. The samadhi of creating in every thought clouds of transformation bodies as many as beings. The samadhi of the thus come ones that is like moonlight in a clear sky. There's a samadhi for you. What's it like? It's like moonlight in a clear sky. Imagine if that was your mind. Whew. We're doing good. Only got a couple more. Kind of like a marathon. Are we ready? Chang Jian Yi Che Ru Lai Zhu Xu Kong San Mei Kai Shi Yi Che Fu Zhuang Yan San Mei Pu Ming Yi Che Fa Yi Deng San Mei Zhao Shi Li Jing Jie San Mei 
，三世一切佛创想三昧。一切佛一密藏三昧，念念中，所啊 ，you didn't miss the period. Pay attention. Ready? 念念中，所作皆究竟三昧，五尽福德章，见无边佛经界三昧，见住一切法三昧。现一切如来变化，悉令知见三昧。念念中，佛日常出现三昧。一日中，悉知三世所有法三昧。普音言说，一切法性寂灭三昧。见一切佛自在立三昧。Well done, you guys are good. Here we go. Unison word. This is called eco tongyin. Here we go. The samadhi of always perceiving how the thus come ones abide in the air. The samadhi of disclosing and revealing the Buddha's adornments. The samadhi of lighting all lamps that show the meaning of dharma, the samadhi of illuminating the states of the ten powers, the samadhi of the appearance of Buddha's banners in the three periods of time, the samadhi of Buddha's esoteric treasury, the samadhi of bringing to the ultimate point all that one does in every thought. Imagine that. The samadhi of a treasury of endless blessings and virtue. The samadhi of seeing the states of boundless Buddhas. The samadhi of firmly dwelling in all dharmas. The samadhi of manifesting all thus come ones transformations, and allowing beings to know and see them. The samadhi of the Buddha's sun appearing in every thought. The samadhi of knowing the dharmas of the three periods of time in a single day. The samadhi of speaking with universal sounds. The still and q q it says q should say quiet. The still and quiet nature of all dharmas. The samadhi of seeing Buddha's sovereign strength. That's the first typo we found here. If if we were an African American community. There would be hallelujah. There would be praise the Buddha coming out as these individual samadhis pop up into awareness. I I find myself wanting to do it, wanting to respond. These are too wonderful to just let them slide by. You want to go? Yes, go Buddha. Enter that samadhi. Give me an S. Give me an A. Give me an M. What's it spell? Samme. All right. This is too good to just let it go by. <coughs> okay. All right. Next one. Here we go. Fa jie kai fu lian hua san mei guan zhu fa. 汝虚空，无住处三昧；十放海，普入一放三昧；入一切法界，无缘底三昧；一切法海三昧；以寂静山，放一切光明三昧。一念中，现一切神通大愿三昧；一切时，一切处，成正觉三昧；一意庄严，如一切法界三昧；普现一切诸佛身三昧；知一切众生。
广大殊胜神通至三昧，一念中起身变法界三昧，现一切啊、oh, ，sorry my mistake one more time， 现一圣净法界三昧。入普门法界，实现大庄严三昧；住持一切佛法轮三昧。Wow! This used to be in Sanskrit, and then some courageous translators put it into Chinese. We have now put it into English, and we are having the experience of hearing the Avatamsaka Sutra come out of our own mouths. Entering our own ears—that's astonishing. Here we go. Ready? The samadhi of the lotus flower that blossoms from the dharma realm. The samadhi of contemplating dharmas as being empty and without a location. The samadhi of the ocean of the ten directions, everywhere entering one direction. The samadhi of plumbing the fathomless source of the dharma realm. Samadhi of all the oceans of dharmas, the samadhi of radiating various auras from a still and quiet body, the samadhi of demonstrating spiritual penetrations and great vows within a single thought, the samadhi of accomplishing right awakening at all times and in all places, the samadhi of using one adornment to enter all of the dharma realm. The samadhi of everywhere showing the Buddha's bodies, the samadhi of great and vast superior wisdom and spiritual abilities that know about all things, the samadhi of pervading the Dharma realm with one's body in a single thought, the samadhi of manifesting the pure Dharma realm of the one vehicle. The samadhi of entering the Dharma realm's doors to universality, and displaying grand decorations. The samadhi of dwelling in and upholding the wheel of all Buddha's dharmas. Are you all dazzled yet? Okay, we have one more page to go, and then I'm going to tell a story about samadhi. <clears throat> Hold on, not quite. Okay, last one, and when we get to the bottom, um, okay, yeah, we'll go all the way to the bottom. Okay, the last of the samadhis. Ready? 以一切法门庄严一法门三昧，以因陀罗王愿恒摄一切众生界三昧，分别一切世界门三昧，成莲花。在有不三昧，知一切众生种种区别，神通知三昧，令其身横现一切众生前三昧，知一切众生差别因生，淹死海三昧。知一切众生，吃别智，神通三昧，大悲平等藏三昧，一切佛入如来俱三昧。And there we go， 观察一切如来解脱处，狮子拼身三昧，菩萨一如是等。不可说佛刹微尘数三昧，入毗卢遮那如来，念念充满一切法界
San Mei Shan Bian Hai. Well done, everybody. Shan Zai, Shan Zai, Shan Nan Yu. Here we go. The Samadhi of all gateways to Dharma, adorning a single gateway to Dharma. The Samadhi of attracting the realms of beings with vows and practices like Indra's net. The Samadhi of discriminating all gateways into worldly Dharmas. The Samadhi of easy and sovereign traveling while seated in a lotus blossom. The Samadhi of wisdom and spiritual powers that know about beings many differences. The Samadhi of making one's body appear before beings. The Samadhi of knowing the ocean of words and languages of beings' different sounds. The Samadhi of wisdom and spiritual powers to know all beings' differences. The Samadhi of impartial great compassion. The Samadhi of all Buddhas entering the thus come one's ultimate state. The charging lion samadhi that contemplates all thus come one's places of liberation. Ready? Here we go. Concluding paragraph. The bodhisattvas with all those inexpressibly many samadhis, numerous as the dust particles in Buddha kshetras, enter the oceans of spiritual transformation of Vairochana thus come one, which in every thought are filled with all the samadhis of the Dharma realm. Well, as we used to say, far out. Can you imagine the samadhi of easy and sovereign traveling while seated in a lotus blossom? <laughs> How wonderful that must be. Well done, everybody. We went through 101 samadhis, and that's a big... Uh, turning point in this particular chapter. Uh, notice the last one talked about the charging lion samadhi and that's the one the Buddha entered in order to make all those uh, spiritual changes emerge. So what a f strange name, right? The Charging Lion. We got one right there. Manjushri is on his, right over Henry's head there. Manjushri is his, on his lion. Uh, the Charging Lion. And the, um, interestingly, the, uh, the commentator that we all follow, the, the monk named Changguan Fasher, known as uh, Avatamsaka Bodhisattva, he uh, has in his commentary says, why is it called the charging lion samadhi? Funny, isn't it? He says. So he's like, yeah, yeah, we thought so too. Back in the Tang Dynasty it was funny and here in the 21st century it's still funny. And he, uh, he says there are various theories why it's called the charging lion samadhi. Charging lions are fearless, they're powerful, they, uh, nothing stops them. If a lion is charging at you, Say your prayers. Enter samadhi on the spot because uh, it's hard to stop them. And the samadhi is the same way. And you think, well, the samadhi, isn't it supposed to be like stillness? And why is it this powerful, raging king of beasts a samadhi? Funny, isn't it? Um, it charges through the Dharma realm and look, The charging lion samadhi that contemplates all the thus come ones places of liberation. That's number 101. It's also number one, not of our list tonight, but it was mentioned a couple weeks ago as what the Buddha entered before he made all the, these marvelous things appear. 
So why do we need something fast and powerful and unstoppable and courageous to reach a place of liberation? It's because getting ourselves free of desire and delusion and attachment and affliction is just that hard. It's hard. It's really hard to put down habits. It's really hard to break out of our cultural barriers. Um, man, we are bound up by our culture as much as we are secure in our culture. There are uh, cultures now in the world, tonight, that are so un insecure that they have to spy on their citizens' thoughts because if a citizen has the wrong thought, it could upset the culture. It could upset the state. And that's not allowed. Thought culture is the control of the thoughts of its citizens. You may not think that thought. If that thought is expressed online, it will be erased, right? How is that stable and secure? Now, I'm living in Berkeley, California, uh, which is a place where pretty much any kind of thought is allowed and celebrated. So easy for me to say, right? But look at how you need to be a charging lion to get yourself free from all the things that keep us tied up. Let's pick out one in particular. How about this thing? This <laughs> We're, we're bound up by our bodies. Our bodies bind us up the worst. Oh, man. If uh, we, we, we have to put a mask on our face because certain bugs might get into our lungs that'll kill us. Not a joke. Think about families who lost their elders. So the wrong breath can tie us down to get liberated, to get untied, to get free, you have to be a charging lion to get the freedom that the Buddha, the Buddha enjoys. What is the, the most unfree thing? It is death. Get right down to it. When this thing, this body, that we all have one, decides it's done, that's it. You might not want to go, but it's over. So that's not freedom at all. Um, and yet, the Tathagata, the Buddha, the prince, in our, our, our Buddha, set as his target, ending birth and death. So it takes a charging lion, huh? To get that kind of liberation. So, let's take one more look at it. With that in mind, the charging lion's samadhi that contemplates all the thus come one's places of liberation. Where in this time, in this world, in this country, under that tree, that courageous person got free. Put an end to birth and death. How did he do it? Samadhi. Samadhi. Now, um, Master Hua would say, uh, anybody can enter the Chu Chan, Ar Chan, San Chan, Si Chan, the first, second, third, and fourth dhyana. But then he would say, you know what happens when you do it? And you go, no, sure, who tell me? He'd say, well, when you enter the first dhyana, your heart stops. <laughs> and you go, my Apple Watch says that's not a good idea. Beep, 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 atrial fibrillation. Yeah. He said, yeah. And the second samadhi? Number two, the second dhyana, your, breath, your breathing stops. You stop breathing. <laughs> but, 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 sure, folks. Doesn't that mean you're dead? No, no, it's samadhi. You go, oops, <laughs> I guess I don't understand what we're really talking about here. What? Yeah, you say, a different kind of breathing opens up. Your horizontal breathing, your breathe through the pores of the skin. You go, my physiology textbook didn't say anything about that. <clears throat> yeah. Science doesn't know all of the answers. So, my goodness, your heart stops, your lungs stop, 
Well, what about number three, Sure, who I don't know if I want to hear about number three. He says, in the third dhyana, your coarse thoughts stop. So it affects your mind in a different, your mind shifts gears. And the, the, the squirrel cage that never stops chattering transforms. Subtle thoughts are still there. What would that be? Like attitudes, and prejudices, and habits. But in the fourth dhyana, subtle thoughts stop. And you might think, oh my goodness, you're just a vegetable, you know. Who wants to live without thoughts? Well, it's not. It's not that at all. It's a liberation. And from the fourth dhyana, the Buddha, some people say from the third dhyana, the prince, on the night he was enlightened, ye du ming xing er wu dao, saw a bright star and enlightened it away. So when the Buddha got enlightened, it wasn't from like the Avatamsaka Samadhi or the Sharangama Samadhi, it was from the dhyanas. So Shurfu would say, anybody can do those things. You just have to let our desires get more and more subtle. Example, um, here, I use this example a lot, so forgive me if you've heard it before. I always, we, we used to, we haven't done it since COVID, but we used to have Saturday lunch here. People will remember, many of us were, were there. And whenever there was a couple new, I, I'm sitting on the men's side, so I watch the guys. Whenever there's a couple new guys who haven't eaten before, maybe they're accompanying their spouse, maybe they're there with their sister for the first time, and of course, we're eating what? We're eating veggie food, right? We're eating veggie food. And let's say it's uh, uh, pho that day, just for example. Okay, so pho, and our veggie pho is really excellent veggie pho, but you know what? It doesn't taste like meat pho. It doesn't taste like the kind of pho that you get at the pho shop down the street. So I watch the guys, they go, oh, okay, pho, that's nice, it looks really good. And they, they go, where's the hot sauce? They go, like it, you know. Uh, and then we go, here you go. Oh, thanks. Oh, now it's got some flavor, you know. Because it doesn't have that same tang that meat pho has. If you're not used to veggie pho, it's, you shift. So what? It's like the tongue seeks that flavor. And without it, it's not what you're, it's not complete. So you add the, ah put on some, you know, Sri Racha or whatever you put in the, into the foot. So it's like, <coughs> those habits are hard, they're hard to break. They hem us in. Samadhi is, could you imagine if you drink three cups of coffee a day, going down to one? That would be, making the peaks and the valleys of sensation a little lower. If you, you know, what would it be? If you have other kinds of habits, things you put in your body. Uh, drinks are a good one because we do it every day. If, uh, can you imagine like doing a caffeine fast for a week? See what happens? First couple of days, really jittery, and then by the third day, you kind of feel pretty good without. So instead of like seeking caffeine that gets us out of bed in the morning, and gets us going, kind of making those peaks and valleys like that, then when we meditate, it's like, oh, huh, huh, it's easier because I'm not seeking sense experience. All right, I said I would tell you a story. One day, uh, Master Hua, was sitting in his K building where Shifu lived at CTDB. And he was talking to a handful of us, senior disciples, monks and nuns, sitting there. And he said suddenly, you want to see me enter Samadhi? And we're like, ding! Yes, Shifu, mm -hmm. we would. And he laughed and he said, all right. And he goes, what do you think? And we're like, that was it, Shirvo? Yeah, what'd you expect? 
And we're like, uh, I don't know. Sure, fool. He said, well, sure. He did it again. Right? And my experience of what I was, because he, he teased us to say, you know, you want to see, see somebody? Want to see it again? You know, it's like that kind of tease. And the second time, we were all like watching really carefully. And it looked as if Shurfu, the word is focused. It's kind of like when a camera is out of focus and you sharpen the focus and suddenly everything's clear from fuzzy to clear. Or if you, uh, let's say your phone gets moisture or cloud or haze or something and you wipe it and oh, now I can see. That was like Shurfu just kind of focused and yet I couldn't see it with my eyes. I more felt it than saw it. It was kind of a sensation as if uh, Shurfu opened something and was putting everything in order based on his own uh, energy pattern. It was remarkable and yet it was a tease because there was nothing to see. And he laughed and he said, okay, well, he said, you're all still wet behind the ears. He said, you're still early. So it was like, uh-huh, sure, fool. And he just went on to talk about other stuff. But it was, it was just that. Now, um, Shurfu never did anything just in jest. It was always timely. So the fact that I can bring it back and tease all of you uh, almost 30 years later, um, he certainly caught my attention. And I want to know more about real samadhi. Um, (coughs) Samadhi is the second step. That's important to understand. If we want to experience this zheng ding zheng shou, right focus and right sense reception, we go to the first step, which is what? How we live during the day, before we meditate. In other words, qi, precepts. If I said precepts, people go, ooh, that again. You know? But if you say, what does precepts mean? It means what we're doing when we're not meditating determines the quality of our meditation. So if we, if we know that we have to have hot sauce before the food tastes right, or lots of mustard, if you eat a, I mean, who, on your impossible burger, do you, does it not taste good without the onions? Uh, does it taste you have you get the works. How many people get the works when you order an Impossible Burger? The works. All right. Good. Does that include mayonnaise? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mayonnaise. Yeah. Okay. Tastes better with the mayonnaise. Yeah, I do. Except no onions. Right. And it's it's okay. It's all right. Tastes kind of kind of sawdusty, but better than some. I had my first Impossible Burger in Asheville, North Carolina, and it was the only lunch that I had, and it was 3 p.m. And uh, I was grateful because that meant if I, if I didn't eat that for any snooty reason, I wouldn't have had lunch that day. And I thought it was okay. And I couldn't eat a second one. One was enough. <laughs> it was well, not all the bun and all the carbohydrates. But it was like, okay, yeah, that's kind of like a hamburger that I used to eat. And I don't miss them. I, it's not like, oh, finally I got a hamburger. No, it's like, I think I'm okay without hamburgers. Think of that ground beef and the cow. I'm okay without it. And as a substitute, it was okay. I mean, impossible burgers are all right. They're, it's, you know, better than no food at all. Um, and every impossible burger means one ground beef did not get ground. So, But if we have to have the mayonnaise and the mustard and the ketchup and the pickle relish and the onions before it tastes right, then there's a place where we can start to work. That's, that gives us an opportunity to calm my senses. 
So I don't need this sensation in order to be okay. That's that first step, the jia step. If I have to have it this way or it's not okay, I don't have many choices. If I can be without it and it's okay, you are free of that sense input. That's the jia part. That's the first step. Bit by bit, samadhi will occur no matter what other practice you do. If it's got to be this way or bushing, then we're not free. And samadhi will be hard to approach. So samadhi is the second step. In every one of those 101 samadhis we read, those were all preceded by somebody's behavior that was like, okay, if it's that way, I'm all right with that. If it's not that way, I'm all right with that. Because why my priorities are what's going on in my body and mind, not the world around me. If I have to reach out and make the world one way or else you're in trouble, you look at me that way, mofo, no liberation, man, nothing. You're just, you know. You have to manipulate the world around you before you're happy. You're not very free. There will be no samadhi for you. Right? Zheng shi sheng fu xin yu dao xiang wei bei. Bian sheng si xiang xin you he de san mei. Fighting is an attitude of victory and defeat. It stands in opposition to the Tao. Furthermore, it creates the attitude of me and you. Where will your samadhi come from? Right? If we are still fighting among, around the world, the world around us, yo he de same, where's your samadhi going to come from? Too many rights and wrongs. Reaching out into the world, trying to manipulate it to make sure that you, that person looks at me the right way, that's the only time I'm happy. Nope, it'll we'll wait. Your samadhi will wait until whatever is going on, it's okay. It's all right. When we are that way, where whatever it is is fine, we're understanding and we're bright, samadhi can, can happen. When you meditate, you, oh, Everything focuses. So, story. Let me show you our guy. Here's our guy. Let's see. Let's get a good one. These I have. I've been collecting Master Empty Cloud images. Uh, yeah, here's a good one. That's one of my favorites. All right. He lived in Zhongnan Shan, which is a mountain range near Xi'an, in uh, Shanxi province, out in the west of China, sort of like Denver to the U.S. And he had some neighbor hermits who were like a mile away, above him and one below. And they kind of looked after each other to make sure that, because they were wild animals, there's Shan Bao, there's a kind of a panther and uh, other kind of carnivorous critters that, that live out there with the hermits. So the monks take care of each other and this was winter and they would occasionally go up and down past each other's huts or the, the path to the hut. And the, uh, these two hermits were walking by Master Empty Cloud's hut and uh, one of them said, hey, you notice, look, there's no, uh, I haven't seen his cooking s smoke, I haven't smelled his smoke for a long time. Let's take a look and see how he's doing. So they walked over to the hut and in the fresh snow, there were large cat tracks around the door. He said, oh, he hasn't come out for a while, let's go check it out. So they pushed the door open and here was Master Empty Cloud sitting like this sitting in samadhi. And one of them said, oh my gosh, wow. You know what? Here, they got a bell. And this is how you bring someone out of samadhi. They went <laughs> that. <laughs> 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 
rang it three times, and Master Empty Cloud goes. Oh, oh, you've come. Oh, and he said, good timing. He says, I just put some taro on. It should be ready. He says, uh, to come for lunch. I got some food for you. And they went over, and they lifted the lid of the cook pot, and the mold had grown on the taro two inches long. And they laughed, and they said, when did you put that on? He says, just this morning. They said, how long ago was that? He said, what day is it? They said, it's December 14th. He says, oh, that was two months ago. <laughs> he had been meditating in samadhi for two months and didn't know. So he was ready to lift the pot lid and serve him the taro, but the, the mold had grown on the taro. So they all laughed and said, boy, you can really meditate. That's samadhi. So of course, right away, everybody goes, well, man, two months. But, I mean, he didn't have to go to the bathroom, and he didn't have to, like, check his email, and he didn't have to, you know, feed the lorikeets. And so, he said, yep, that's just how amazing samadhi is. It is in a state that uh, science is still wondering about. But it's something, it's not unique. It is something that everybody can do. That's the, the most amazing thing. Seeing him with a full head of hair is always without a beard. In the winter, this is what you do in the winter. You put on lots of layers. Um, how did, we talked about the first step is how you live when you're not meditating. Master Empty Cloud lived in a cow shed. Didn't want a fancy house. He lived in a cow shed. This is he at age 119, one year before his nirvana. He was out working in the fields at Jun Ru Su a year before he passed on at age 119. As they say, tough bones. Okay. Uh, Jim sure do you have anything you want to... Let me see. Uh, we are proud that our interfaith blood drive was a success. Jim sure can tell you all about that. Yeah, I just uh, received an email from our one of the hosts of the event, Vicky Summer, uh, one of the Red Cross worker told her it was one of the most, actually the most productive blood drive in whole Berkeley, he says. Really? <laughs> Very happy. 42 units of blood, plasma, and red cells collected. With 42 pints? Yes. Wow. And it's equal saved 123 lives. 123 lives saved with 42 pints of so blood. So it was quite good, and we are very happy to uh, participate and co-create this event. And the next year will be a uh, 10th. So the we next year will be the 10th annual blood drive. Exactly. Uh, so. In the room tonight, listening in the audience, there are three volunteers who put their time into making it happen. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And in this room, even some donate the blood. <laughs> That's right. There are some, yeah. Even monk's blood. <laughs> monk's blood. I barely made it into the uh, enough iron. They do a hemoglobin test, and it's, you have to have over 13 parts, and I had 13.1. So, yeah. so vegetarians are not all anemic. You want to make that point. Yeah, we, are, we are thinking, is it blood is vegan or not? <laughs> yeah, vegan blood. How about that? Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, and what we have in our schedule, uh, actually, Derbyu just on Monday will start the new semester, new classes. A lot of new students, 26 around the globe, starting a new journey and uh, in Ukiah and Sudana Center and so forth. We have still our uh, virtual Buddha Hall morning ceremony, 4 a.m. 
and the Here evening ceremony, 6.30, although we have some troubles in the morning with internet, so I think two or three times we couldn't stream our morning ceremony. I just mentioned, if this is a case, it's not that we are not here. <laughs> mm -hmm. We do our morning ceremony. And if something happened, of course, we depend on technology a lot, just please play the recorded on our, mm, on our channel. And we have a very one good news. It's made not on the website, but you can contact maybe our friends like uh, Guo Zhen, who is here. We want to announce that our Dharma master, Jean Foscher, on this Monday, starting recite the Buddha's name again from Arizona. He have an he would do it from Monday to Thursday, 12.30, four times a week. And we are very excited that, um, and he is excited, and you know, we'll see how it goes, but it's... Let me, let me repeat that. Uh, starting day after tomorrow, 12.30? What, what time of day every day? 12.30 to 1. 12.30 to 1, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, four days a week. Jin Foshir will be leading the Buddha recitation from Arizona, where he is currently uh, on a health sabbatical recovery. And how do people find it? This is the same link what we use for all the ceremonies, okay. morning, evening. So just if you want to, if you don't have this link, you see where I'm sure just uh, click that. You can. You can just apply it. You have a few questions, like three of them, and you receive the link, and you can use this link to recite the Buddha's name with Jin Foshe as well, as join other uh, ceremonies. Okay. So, yeah, go here to our regular um, BBM monastic practices. Uh, let's register see. Register here. Dharma right there. See? Register here. There we go. Oh, he's the Yo. Yep. And there, Master, do you want to say uh, about... I do, I do. Here we go. Um, it's right here. Check it out. Berkeley Buddhist Summer Song Circle, an evening of Dharma music. Here's the Buddha playing a pipa. Sunday, August 27th, 7 p.m., right here. Berkeley Buddhist Monastery. Music by myself, Alan Sanaki, Betsy Rose, Eve Decker, and James Barras, who will be added here. So this is our next Berkeley Buddhist Folk Song Circle concert coming up. Sunday, 27th, 7 p.m. For those folks online, we will try to webcast it. That's the plan. Whether or not it happens, we'll see. I think tomorrow the, on the website all this information will be uh, yeah. available for everyone. So, Dear Master, when was the last concert like this? Uh, gosh, I, my um, memory of it was 2005, but I don't, I, that's what I, my folder said, but that seems too long ago. Right? Wow. So, if you miss it, you have to wait 18 years yeah. for the next one. <laughs> Saga Namo Guan Shu Yin. You will always come and save me from the troubles that I'm in, etc. That's the kind of thing we're going to be doing. But you get to hear uh, songs from all of the local Berkeley. Buddhist songwriters and singers. That's the fun part. We'll be singing together on some and uh, get to hear all the different talents uh, from pretty much uh, everybody's an elder. We're all in our 70s. We're all old folkies. 
but uh, kind of unique that Berkeley, California has this homegrown uh, Dharma song circle. So, alrighty, uh, we are, we did it. I, we did, read 101 samadhis tonight, just amazing. Um, I'm really proud of everybody that we did it. Uh, to remind all of you that on Friday at 1 p.m., um, the, there will be an, a lecture on Master Empty Clouds um, picture biography. I'm trying to think of how do we get there. Um, let's see here. If we go, let's see here. The way to go is to go to berkeleymonastery.org right here and go to Song of Enlightenment. This is the, it's not the Song of Enlightenment. We will update this this week because we just started. Here's how you register. Uh, it'll be the Master Empty Cloud picture biography. Um, and that will get you onto the mailing list and every week you'll be sent an email to remind you. We have about a hundred folks who come every week um, from the entire world, from Sao Paulo, Brazil, to Hanoi, Vietnam, uh, from St. Petersburg, Florida, to, to San Jose, California. So, Alrighty, uh, dedication of merit time right now. Let's practice. Tomorrow night, by the way, uh, 7.30 p.m., if you go over to uh, CTTB Live, the YouTube channel, CTTB Live, you can hear my dedication, 10 Dedications Sutra lecture. So... How are you going to transfer your merit? Please do. May every living being our minds as one and radiant with light share the fruits of peace with hearts of goodness, luminous and bright. If people hear and see how hands and hearts can find in giving unity, may our minds awake to great compassion, wisdom, and to joy. May kindness find reward May all who sorrow Leave their grief and pain May this boundless light Dispel the darkness Of our endless night Because our hearts are one This world of pain Turns into paradise May all become compassionate and wise. May all become compassionate and wise. May all become compassionate and wise. And we will put these images on the screen so folks, no matter where you are, can bow together. We'll make three half bows from right from where you're sitting. Here we go. Bow in respect to the Venerable Master. Alrighty, that's going to do it for us tonight. We'll see you all next week. Ami Tua Four. Good night, everybody.